Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Well, it's afternoon here. Good evening. Yes. It's in, in England, we're, we're what? How many hours? You're in uh, Canada, aren't you? I'm in Canada right now. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. Nice. Good evening, everybody here in the UK. And in afternoon, anybody that's joining on from stateside. Hope you are well. How are you doing, Glenda? I'm doing spectacular. Thank you so very much. And yourself? I'm doing fabulous, thank you. I just can't believe it. It's come round so quick Wednesdays. And uh, yeah, it's just so nice to, to have you on. I'm just going to sort out my... That's uh, now I can see you fully. Cool. We've got lovely people joining on. Good evening. Hi, Ronnie. Hope you're well. We've got a fabulous number of people joining us. So just to introduce today's topic and guests properly... Uh, first of all, I'm Gadget Rana. For those of you who have been watching me uh, for the first time here on Instagram, I'm a relationship coach. Um, I support, or should I say, empower women who feel trapped by their relationships, either by family or by marriage, or just going through some form of feeling stuck. I help you get unstuck, fall in love again, and find a way to to discover who you really are. You know what it is you truly want in your relationship through relationship values. Now, if you've been following me all this week, we've been asking questions around what does it mean to be cheated on? Um, should you take people back if they cheat on you? And, you know, have you ever been, been in that experience yourself? So, you know, we've been running a bit of a poll since Monday and it's great to see everybody engaging with it. And this week's guest uh, is the lovely Glenda Rock Carroll, who has mentioned she's in Canada. And uh, Galenda and I got connected by a mutual friend and we got on a call a few weeks back and we just found that there was such a natural alignment. When I heard Glenda's story, when, we shared, when I shared my own, there was just this natural way of us both um, aligning and said, so actually, it'd be great just to have Glenda on and have her share her story. So thank you, Glenda, for, for joining. Um, if you want to, do you want to share a little bit about yourself in terms of your what you do now before we talk about the past, if that makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I am a life coach um, and relationship, and I also work on business. Um, my life has entailed so many different things, and um, it's, you know, when I coach, it's not just about my schooling, um, but it's also... Um, it's about my life of what I've been through um, because I really do teach from the heart and um, I don't say something or do something that I don't totally believe in. So I work also with uh, primarily with women, although I do from time to time work with men as well. Um, but it, it's the same thing. Women that are stuck, that are in relationships that are not supportive of themselves, who they lose themselves. So I help women, also in uh, women that ha are dealing with infidelity in their relationship and also through divorce. Uh, because I believe, um, because I've had all this bestowed upon me in my life, and I learned some incredible lessons that changed my results the second time around. I was, I've been into long-term relationships and they taught me some incredible lessons. And that's what I put out to other people because, you know, everything is mindset. And I believe it's also the same way when we're also dealing in business. So what ends up happening in a lot of times in our life is we lose confidence and our own self-esteem in ourselves. And it could be from a relationship. It could be even how we've been brought up in life. If a parent has not given that child a lot of support and, and that showing them to, how to deal with their and build their own confidence, it can go back all the way there. And we go back in when I work with people and find out where really where it's coming from. But to if you need to get out of a relationship that's not doing you well, um, you need to start with um, building your own confidence and, and understanding yourself so that you can move forward with strength. And that's why um, I also have uh, come up with my own Facebook group, which is called Harness Your Personal Power, because I believe we all have that power within ourselves. And that's what I'm trying to teach other women is to pull out that power within yourself because you've got it. And I'm just here as your as your cheerleader, 
as your guidance counselor. Um, I'm here to give you some ideas, but you have the answers in you. Yeah. So like I say to, to most people, you know, this is not something that, you know, I, I, how do I put it, was my career aspiration when I first started out. I didn't even know what coaching was back then. Um, unfortunately, life teaches you a hard lesson and then you, you find your own way with it is the best way to describe it. Um, and, I, and I say it was a bit like a flick of a switch. You know, I didn't go looking for it. It almost came to me because of my circumstances. So I had no choice. Well, I said no choice. I did have a choice. Um, but it was right. a choice of like, do you want to continue as you are and you can keep getting the same results? Or I can start looking at my own life and questioning, okay, what can I do differently? Where is it that I've ended up? What, what is it and where is it that I wouldn't say went wrong, but the actions I took that had me lead to this moment in time. Now, in, in infidelity or cheating, you know, for its simplest terms, most of us in that moment most reflect upon themselves. And this is, I always say they either go to blame, it's the other person's fault, Yes. Or they blame themselves. Very and true. The blaming ourselves goes, I'm not good enough. Okay. And one of the things, since I've been researching a lot more on the subject, is actually it's got nothing to do with the person that's been cheated on, if that makes yeah. sense. You know, totally. and I'd love to hear um, your. But we people... always. Sorry, go on. We all, yeah, no, we always stop and we look at ourselves. And I, you know, and I, I did it myself too. It's like, you know, maybe I wasn't pretty enough. Um, you know, did I start gaining weight? Um, you know, we all look at ourselves first because especially as women, we're very quick. Like, and I, I, I say as women because I'm not saying about men because men get cheated on too. And, you know, and I understand that. And, and they lose their own personal power too. It, we all do because when you love somebody and you've trusted somebody and they take that trust and they throw it away, it, it does hurt us. And, but we as women, we look to ourselves because, you know, all through our lives, it's, you know, the magazine covers, the beautiful women, the skinny women, and, you know, it's all, it's all about the beauty. And, and really, the, you know, what I try to teach you is we're all beautiful. The beauty is, is more than skin deep. It, it's right inside. It's that heart is what it is. But we don't see that. It starts with you know, uh, we're looking at ourselves and we always try to find ways of, of doing to change things about ourselves or to blame ourselves. And is that the first place? I know, you know, I'd love you to just share a little bit around, you know, where you were in your life stage, you know, and in your marriage before you discovered what you discovered. And, you know, how did you how did you deal with it and cope with it? So, well, I have to actually go back a little bit more than that because, you know, if it wasn't for the first time around, I wouldn't have ever had that, that um, brilliance that came to me. So the first time around, I was um, married about 12 years and I had two very small children and um, my spouse and I, I was always felt like I had three children and... Um, you know, and I was the mother of three kids and I got tired of being the mother and I um, I gave up because he also had a lot of health issues and he didn't want to help his own self um, with his own health problems. Anyways, we can, you know, we all have to look to ourselves first. And um, through that, um, we agreed when we were, we decided that it wasn't going to work and we had to worry more for the children than anything else, that it was going to be a civil uh, relation or divorce. And um, it, uh, within a very short time, that turned into being not the case at all. And I struggled because, you know, he took all the money out of the bank. Um, I was a stay at home mom. So two kids, no money, no child support, no spousal support, and um, I had nowhere to go. Anyways, um, and that's another whole story, how, how that of years of struggling and that worry constantly was terrible. I paid over $200,000 in lawyer's fees, and I don't know how I got out of it, but I did, and I got myself back on. I put started my life all over again, 
and recreated Glenda. And, and I was doing okay, but he didn't give up the fight all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, then I got into another relationship and I thought he was my knight in shining armor. I, you know, um, there was a lot of attraction and we had great time together. And, and I thought we had really a lot more connection when it came to values. And, um, you know, I, I'm not, um, uh, it's not about the money, but it's like I'm from a working family. I've never known anything but to work. And um, so 14 years later, we were in a relationship and we had a lot of struggles. You know, we were in a business. I worked in his business. I supported him wholeheartedly. And, and then, but there were always little things, you know, we also had a lot of things, you know, um, you know, my dad got very ill and, and passed away. I have two brothers with special needs that I always kind of over saw their lives. And I have two of my own kids and, and constantly running a business. And then there was a point where my mom got sick and she got dementia and I had to sort of take over and help her and my brothers all at the same time. And his mom got sick as well, all at the same time all this was going on. And I brought her into my house and for a year and a half, and I nursed her back together. And, you know, in the time my, my mom was dying and crazy times. But there was something missing. There was something kept telling me. And I remember one day being in my backyard with my girlfriend, and we were talking, and I said to her, I said, can you do me a favor? And I want you to be really truthful towards me. And she says, yeah. And I said, T can you just take a look at me? And I said, you know, like, have I let myself go? Like, do you think that I'm now like that I, and, and here i am always been the one that really looks after myself because that's just who Glenda is, right? But you know, we still go up, we still go up and down a little bit in weight. But yeah, here I, I am saying, you know, look yeah. at me, you know, like, am I fat? Am I ugly? Like, you know, like, I, I'm always thought I was okay. I was going to say, right? I'd love to, I'd love to know from the audience, sorry to cut over you, Glenda, I'd love to know from the audience, how many of you have ever done that? Have asked your sister, asked your mum, asked a friend, how do I look? Because I know I've done it several times, guys. Be honest, either show some love or put it in the comments that yes, you have, you know, looked in the mirror, at least ask yourself that question. Because I know that's where it starts when we start thinking, I'm not good enough. And before you even know it, it's like evidence starts to show up around you that you feel like, oh, that must have been the reason, right? Right. You start feeling like you're not pretty enough and maybe I'm not smart enough. And, you know, all these questions. And, and uh, like I consider myself to just be the average woman out there. So, you know, I, I do say to people when we talk about this of, you know, really, like, you got to really start digging down deep. And I know as a child, I grew up feeling like I was always the ugly duckling. You know, I was taller and bigger than everybody else. So I, it was always something that was kind of my, my insecurity. And anyways, so, um, and then I remember from time to time, I would say to him, you know, are you having an affair or something? And he would get really mad at me and, and look at me and, and he would yell at me, how dare you think of that? And I would go, well, something's not right. So, and then after every time I would say it, I sort of, okay, I'm sorry, you know, and let it go. And then one day a phone or an email came in that our business was struggling at that point. And uh, email came in and it was from a woman that I had never heard of, nothing and going. And we were being trying to be very careful of monies and things like that. Anyways, when I asked who it was, he went, oh, um, oh it's nothing. And, and all of a sudden, I don't know why, but, you know, all these times I would ask and, you know, and I would see his change in his whole behavior. So, yeah. so if anybody is dealing with this, here's a key point right now. And these are part of the things that I teach people. Look at your partner's behavior when you ask questions. Look at body language. Body language is so important. And I go through this through my, through my, um, through my coaching as well. So it was that point and it was that day that my whole world changed. When so that night, say, I went... 
Sorry, Glenda, just because I, I know there's going to be so many of you guys, like, get your questions in. This is where you ask the audience where we can, sorry, not ask, you can ask us, you know, what kind of behavioural signals, what are the red flags, as I like to call them, because there's going to be some real gems that Glenda will know. Um, and it may not be the obvious things that we think of. I know most of us will think, well, you know, they're always being like that, or they're always shout back or something, but there'll be more than just a little bit of a shift is what, you know, Glenn okay. is alluding to. Right. So there's, there's the eye contact. They can't look you in the eye. I, and I didn't say a word. So here I was, I stood there with blank and, and they'll, and that gave him more discomfort because I didn't react. So the idea of standing there and not reacting was huge. So what ended up happening is the story started to change. You know, from it was, it was nothing, and then all of a sudden he was becoming more of a friend and then an advisor. So when the story started to change, so did my feelings. So ladies, people, I'm telling you, I'm begging you because it was something I didn't do is I ignored for years that inner voice, that inner voice that led me to so much wonderful things in my life, so many wonderful wins, but I allowed that inner voice to not listen to it. So when your voice is screaming at you, I tell you, stop and pay attention. It's so important. So from that point on, I started that night when everybody was asleep, I went down and I started looking around his computer area. And that's when I ended up finding all of his passwords. Another key point, if you have a partner and you're suspecting that they are, you know what, there is some place that they keep passwords. Yes, it's not right, but let me tell you something, how I felt. I gave 14 years of my life to somebody who I trusted, who I built up, who I gave my all and all, who I supported him and his family and gave a million percent. So when somebody takes your trust and throws it away, you do what you need to do for yourself. That is my one of my other key points. When I found all of his passwords, that's when everything started. I went into his email and lo and behold, the story came out. 14 years of lies, major amounts of, of deceit, a lot of women, a lot of stories, a lot of, lot of other things, behaviors that were not, shall we say, right. And that is when I knew my heart sunk. I actually ran into the washroom. I threw up. I was just, the world had all of a sudden collapsed. But what happened at that same time was that everything that had happened years before that first relationship all came rushing back to me. That night I knew the relationship was over, but as I walked up and down my hallway, not knowing what to do, I knew that I was not going to tell him what I just found out because I knew that I wanted to be out of this relationship. I wasn't going to be with a man who was lying, who was tr untrustworthy, who was taking my love and throwing it away and putting my life in jeopardy and never mind just my life, my children's as well, because he was dealing with people who were not safe. And that is when I decided to take massive action. And, um, I went into a different role. I needed to put myself, I put myself in a very different mindset. You see, I struggled so much the first time that at this point in my life, at this point now, I was, I was now 50 years old. I wasn't going to start my whole life all over again like I had to the first time. Mm -hmm. I had already built up and brought a lot into this relationship. There was too much that I had already brought in, never mind that I had made because I was the one who was running the entire business. So there was no way I was walking away and, and he was having his own challenges with his own self and business that I had to be careful. So I set that night, I had set myself a goal. Number another little uh, golden nugget for you all. 
you want to get somewhere, you want something important in your life, if it's going out of going through a divorce, starting or building your business, you need that end goal. You don't need to know how you're going to get there. You just need to know where you're shooting to. That night, I knew the relationship was over. My end goal was sell the house. Yeah. Get out of the most, relationship, sell the house. Yeah, as I say, most women in that moment kind of, again, as I say, go to, to panic mode because they either go into scarcity of, oh, my God, he's going to take everything from me. You know, you end up, unfortunately, rushing to confront them and in the process realizing, oh, my God, now I'm facing a divorce. Or they go into denial. Okay, if I don't say anything, I can keep the marriage going and it becomes a marriage of convenience because you're not saying what there is to be said, but you're pretending no, no. everything's okay. Or the third extreme is you do say what's there and you still stay, choose to say in the marriage because you believe you can't make it out on your own. And again, it's coming from that place, you know, some of the clients I deal with of they're going through divorces or they're about to start divorces, but guess what? The, the comfort of where they're at and the stability of where they're at in that and it's horrible true. pain. Yeah, of the uncomfortableness in the comfortableness, if that makes sense. So it totally enough, makes sense. Yeah, so they're uncomfortable because of the pain around them, but they're comfortable because they'd rather stay there than do something about it and really take responsibility and action to go, you know what? My life means more than this. And if I'm not doing it for me, think about your kids. And most people will say, but I am thinking about the kids. But here's the thing, and I saw that. That's why I actually went th uh, through my divorce in my first marriage is because I was thinking about my children. And I sat there because, yes, I did have a good life. I was in a very comfortable world. My, the family had, you know, a lot of resources. Life was easy in some respects. But I look back and I said to myself, I'm not showing my children what love really means. Yeah. Is this how I'm bringing them up? Or is this the relationship that I'm showing them? And I believe as parents, and we are the, the best teachers to our children. And your children, you know, I, and I hear this all the time from parents. You know, your children learn so much by just watching and listening. They don't have to repeat anything. But it's all going in there. Those little minds are so brilliant. They're absorbing. They're watching. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I, I've learned that through so many things that my children, like now my children are both adults and they're beautiful. And, you know, I, I'm so grateful. They're, I, I believe they're my million dollars each. You know, I, I adore my kids and we have a phenomenal relationship. And there I'm totally blessed. Um, but you have to remember what you put in is what you also, what you reap. And when you don't have that respect for your children, you know, when we, we stay in a relationship and people go, well, my kids don't know. Well, you know what? Hello. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I was going through my divorce and, and I had another friend and her husband was living in the basement and he would run upstairs every morning and say that he would, you know, that their kids don't know. Well, I, I found out from the kids because one of the kids were friends with mine that they knew that mommy and daddy were sleeping together. Mommy and daddy were having problems. And, you know, so yeah, when don't. you try to think you're fooling your kids, the only one you're fooling is yourself. Yeah, it becomes a what I call the comfort blanket that we think by saying this, you know, we're protecting the children. And I always say there's a secondary gain. You're not taking it on for yourself. You're, you're allowing that to be the reason why you say, no, 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 it's better where I am. I guess there's no, like, I really want to make it clear to everyone, there's no right or wrong way. You know, if you did you got to reconcile, yeah. you got to do what's right for, like you. for you. I had to be true to myself. I live a life where I need to be true to me. And I have to be happy. I felt, and I've always felt, I have one life to live. So I'm going to be happy with what it is. I need somebody who's going to be true to me, not who's going to lie to me and who's going to go off and put my own life in jeopardy. You know, having sexual relationships with other people and not being careful, you're, it's like putting a bullet to your head. You don't know. It's Russian roulette. We're, it's, and and you, you were educated now. We're not stupid people anymore. So, 
you know, I, I don't sit back and tell you what's right for you or right for that. But I am here as as a coach and uh, for for other people that are going through this to say, well, okay, if this isn't right for you, then I want to teach you that instead of losing your head about yourself, if something happens and you know that you want out, then stop. Don't react. Speak to me. Let's talk about, let's put your business hat on. Let's, let's organize your life before he knows. Because here's what I do know is when you go through a divorce, what ends up happening is people change. When you start to deal with money and, decide, and, and all of a sudden it's your side and his side and that, they start changing. People are not the same anymore. 100%. Um, I always say this to my clients, and I'll say it again, you know, when emotions are high, intelligence is low. So when we're coming from a place of, sorry, go on, Linda. I well, that. I don't know if, it's, if intelligence is low, but it changes. So yeah. people become very, and I saw like my ex, you know, took all the money out of the bank and, and left me, didn't matter that there are two kids to feed. It was all about him and, and, and protecting him and his, and his money, not the kids. So yeah. people yeah. become changing. So you need to, you need to think smart, you know, organize yourself. That's what I, I claim to people is, is start. If you, if you're feeling that this is the road you need to take, then you need to do a little research before you pull the plug. You, you know, yeah. we got to think and we got to think with our heads and not in our hearts. We, we have to be, you know, it's important that we love ourselves and we do things out of love, but we also have to think, you know, like we, we still have to know what, how we're going to move forward tomorrow and how we can do things to build our own selves and our, and protect ourselves and our family. And well, most of the time, it's the women that have to protect the children. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure many that are watching tonight would, would totally agree, and I'd love to, to hear their opinions as well. You know, if you've got anything you would like to ask, anything you'd like to add, you know, are we resonating with you guys? Is it making sense? You know, we're not here, like I said, to, to you know, bring down either sex, because it's not. No, like, it's not about that. It's. You know, there's, there's some people that are blessed by having a true union. Yeah. Oh, Glenda's gone quiet, was it me? No. I think we're having a little technical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're having a little te technical difficulties between the UK and Canada. <laughs> no, it, it's well, not about bashing. And you know what? everybody goes through it and, and it can happen to anybody. And it's, you know, I just proclaim that if you are the one who is, you know, that um, you've lost your, tr if the, the trust has been taken away and somebody has done something, you know, like I'm, you know, if you're happy in your relationship, then, then you stand up and say it and speak to each other because, you know, here's the thing. Divorce isn't the all end all. Maybe there's ways, there, not maybe, there are ways of changing relationships and dealing it and, and catching it. You know, had my spouse only had one affair, I would have definitely stayed and I would have dealt with it. But there mm -hmm. are fact that there was too many and too many years that had gone that it was like, there was no way. But I do believe in love and I do believe in relationships and there's ways of bringing back that spark in a relationship. Glenda, do you think, had, had that happened in your first marriage, do you think it would have cancelled out the second one? You know, I mean, if you can talk from that perspective. I know it's the unknown of what you didn't know you didn't know. But would you say that dealing with someone we, that's cheated on you is worse than the, the, you know, the divorce that you went through with your first husband where, unfortunately, he left you in, in financial there were a lot of things. I also had a very controlling narcissistic mother-in-law. It was it was very very hard situation to it's it wasn't cut and dry and I did try it. I didn't just leave that relationship. We went through years of counseling and dealing with it and and really did try, but in any relationship there has to be two people that want to be together who want to work at it together. 
Yeah. It can't be one person looking to do all the work. It just doesn't work that way. You know, there's got to be that love and respect and understanding, but there's got to be that you both want it. Yeah. you got to play, to play on the right same there's, there's, Yeah. You know, like you can't play baseball if only one person is going to hit the ball. Yeah. Right? It, it just doesn't work that way. And, you know, you, being on, having your team playing, you, you build on each other. You, didn't, you, you know, you count on each other. That's what life is really all about. You know, and, and it doesn't mean to say, like, even in life, when we talk about relationships even, never mind just spouses that cheat on each other. How about, you know, friendships that, you know, somebody isn't true to a friendship? 100 we Building our trust amongst each other. Once we lose that trust, yeah, it's, it's very it's hard to build it back up. But yeah, it's, sorry, go on. yeah, but it's not that it's that it's impossible. You can build rebuild trust, but again, it takes two to tangle. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now I want to ask you: Did anybody out there ever have any trouble or issues with trust, even in in relationships? And it can happen with mothers and daughters and sons, and it can happen in every form of a relationship. And building, you know, there's times when somebody talks to somebody else about them, and you know, and and in that way you lose trust in somebody because maybe you've said somebody to a fr said something to a friend and and they've gone and said something to someone else and then you're devastated because they gave out your secret. Has that ever um, happened to you? For, for me, for sure. And I'm sure the audience can at least think of one person, whether it's been at work, someone's that let you down. Maybe there's someone that you thought has told a, what I call a white lie, where you know they've blatantly lied and you've just covered it up. And maybe, you know, in, in, indirectly, we've ended up hurting someone or breaking someone else's trust. And some of the key places I always say to look are, are you doing what you said you would do? Or, you know, do you end up, um, how do I put it, covering it up? Not apologizing for it, not owning it, but pretty much going the opposite way, defending it. And when we come from there, just get that, you know, we're not owning it. We just end up pretending that we, you know, we're not in the wrong. Just want to acknowledge Sheena Patel's on. She said, yes, thank you, Sheena. Totally appreciate that. Thank you. She's an amazing lady. I went to Kilimanjaro with her. So uh, shared a tent. And I can tell you this girl is definitely uh, whiter than white. She's, she's a real... Glenda, I think before I took on any kind of um, transformational... Show me trust and I'll, and I'll do anything for you. I have to well, uh, and I understand because that's me too. Yeah, if I have to demand trust, then what am I actually bringing to this relationship? Absolutely. It before I begun. And there's nothing, that's one of the most important ingredients. You know? It's, it's just like, you know, you guys may not believe it. Glenda and I have only spoken probably once. And, you know, there's a trust element of, hey, are you all right to show up on a Wednesday night, UK time? Now, I don't know if Glenda's going to forget. I don't know, you know, if you, if you get closer to the time and go, ah, oh, you just had it. You had my word in it. You know, you had my word of this is what I say I'll do. And I just have to show up and do what I said I would do. You know, and that's, that's the way partnership and friendship works or trust works and we I think as humans we overcomplicate it well I was just going to say as human beings we all have to look at we all screw up sometimes in our lives and you know what I'm not I, I say to you know we all are just humans and we're all going to make mistakes and and sometimes we do stupid things without really thinking about it but just own it 
and, and apologize and then move on. And that's all it really takes. But when yeah. you lie, it just builds. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and the same whether you're in, like we talk about whether it's a marriage, whether it's even in a business, you know, like I can't tell you how many times I've been in, in, in many different businesses and things happen. And you know what? When you, when you make a mistake, you make a mistake because you can fix it once you realize you've made it. But yeah. it grows when you don't fix, yeah. when you don't make, you know, come to it and be honest about it. Yeah, I'm, I was just gonna share that the three questions that I was posing, I don't know if you got to see them, Glenda. So I was asking who no. cheats more. So this week's poll that I was doing as of Monday with, with the people that follow me on Insta, I was like, so who cheats more, men or women? And it was interesting because 100% of the poll was all women initially. And it was coming out around about 70, 30 towards men. And then I asked a few men to obviously get involved and a few further women. And it was interesting how the women also felt that women cheat more than men, right? So eventually it kind of bottomed out at 65, 35, which kind of made sense, you know, in favor of, in favor of men cheat more. Uh, and then my next question was interesting, like, although we say you know would you take a cheat back like you were just saying if it had been the one maybe you would have yeah. if he had come and talked to you about it first do you think that would have made a difference a hundred percent a hundred percent um you know when i asked years before and when i felt things were something was wrong when i asked years before and he profusely, um, you know, looked at me as if it was all me and all that. Yeah, it, it would have made a total difference. And I really think that things can be worked out. In, like, like I say, we all go through different things in relationships. And, and marriages sometimes go, like, it, it, like marriages, business, relationships, everything goes up and goes down. That's what life is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the flow of life and how you deal with it is what counts. So if you make a mistake and if you've gotten into something, you know, sometimes what happens is what happened to me in, in my relationship too, you know, family things started getting in the way. People were getting sick, things were happening. And what ends up happening is you ignore your spouse and you don't mean to, but life takes over sometimes. So, you know, you need to shift towards back to your spouse and let them feel that they are important. And that's sometimes all you need to do into a relationship to bring that spark back in. Like I agree about going and having date nights when you have a significant other or anybody special. Spend that time. Make sure you, you let that person know how special they are. You know, what is it? The five things about love, um, you know, the, the touching, which way to people the, the find love the languages. most ways the love languages, right. Yeah. Everybody's got yeah. their own love languages, the touch, the gift, the giving, whatever. Yeah. There's all different ways of showing somebody you love them. Yeah. And it's something can be as easy as, as, as a little note in the morning of saying, I love you. Absolutely. I, I just want to touch upon, um, and I'm, I'm happy to be vulnerable as the next person, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's never happened to me. It's happened probably not in the same extreme. Um, mine was probably a little bit more light touch because firstly, I wasn't married to them. Secondly, I wasn't dating them long enough to know. I knew that my own emotions of, like you say, that trust element wasn't 100% there. And as you said, when you start to snag on one thing they say, you kind of question and question and question. Um, fortunately for me, and it was quite an interesting one, they had advised me they were going off on holiday uh, to a destination that they had asked me to go with them. And then they somehow ended up there and sending me pictures. I was like really curious going, how did that happen? You know, one minute we're talking about this and the next minute they're there. Then they're asking me to buy a ticket and fly out. And I was like, this is not making sense. And it was uh, around Christmas time. Um, so it's going back a good sort of five, six years after I, you know, ended my divorce and everything else. And it was, it is something to, to be vulnerable and put yourself out there. And what happened Absolutely. with me was, yeah, what happened with me was just one morning, I decided to go off to the gym. But you know when you say that curiosity got the better of me? Mm -hmm. It did. And I was like, nah, I'm curious. I, I just, there's something not right. 
And as I said, you don't ignore the signs. So I followed my intuition and turned up at this person's door. Lo and behold, they were standing outside their front door. I was like, what? Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, listen. Mr. Head, they me and just apologized. And I said, what are you apologizing for? And they said, no, 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 I can't tell you, but I'm just, I want to tell you I'm sorry. You know, even then, I didn't know. I thought they just lied about being in a different country. And then obviously after that, I didn't see them again. And I was just as stubborn. I booked a flight and went off to um, a yoga retreat, <laughs> as you do. And thought, well, I'll show you. And this is what happens, right? You kind of become just as stubborn as the next person. And of course, they were worried and going, well, who the hell are you with? Right? And we don't know that sometimes we make situations worse. And I said, no, I'm, I'm on my own. And they're like, are you sure? And I went, well, yeah. And they went, well, why would you get on a plane? I said, well, you wanted me to get on the plane. So I have, but I've chosen to do it for me. Anyway, I returned back. It was over a Christmas period. And I got a text the day or the morning I landed that said, I'd like to see you. Right? And, and mm -hmm. this is where you've got to look out for the signs of how people play you. And I've got a text. And of course, they were heading to the airport. And I was like, oh, my God, here we go again. OK. And in that moment, I just thought, forget this. I've had enough. I'm not going to entertain the idea. But this is how karma works, ladies. When you need to know. Can you repeat that? Because you just, you froze from me here. Can you repeat that again? Because I think you've said something very important that people need to hear. What was the last thing you Glenda? Sorry, you said what, about karma. Yes. So karma has this way of catching up with you. And it's so important we pay, pay attention to it. Three months later, okay, I bumped into this person at a wedding. And again, they were being very sheepish. They were completely scared of me to the point they wouldn't come near me. And I thought, well, I don't want to talk to you anyway. But they were that scared. And it took their, I happened to know his mum, who came over to me and said, how are you? And I said, yep, I'm great. And uh, she turned around and said, she goes, you do know my son's engaged. And I went, oh, congratulations. And I then turned around and said, how long's that been? And she said, oh, he's been engaged for a year and a half. Wow. And you can imagine how I felt in that moment, you yep. know, because it was, I had no idea. But I took it on then and I thought, well, great. It's not about me. This is about this person and how they operate. And I'm so glad I dodged a bullet. And I say I dodged a bullet because they even proposed to me and I just didn't take it serious. You know, but this is how we have to like really do the inner work to understand how the hell did I attract something like that in my life? Well, also by listening and watching with people, how they talk, their actions and things like that. So I often tell people, you know, when somebody's showing you and telling you who they are, you need to watch and listen. Because, you know, had I done years ago, had listened and watched to things, I would see, I would have saw a lot of things that I didn't want to see. So we need to look at when somebody says something, you don't just let things go. We, you need to really listen and, and really pay attention. Because if, if someone shows you certain types of behaviors, that's really who they are. And these, sometimes those behaviors can really affect your life in, in a negative way. So, you know, it's listening, it's learning, it's, it's, it's by standing back and just closing your mouth and opening your ears is, is quite important. I'll, you know, take the time to understand someone, take the time to have a look at their routine. In COVID times, it's so hard. It's so hard to hear that because you're not around them. You're not seeing who their friends are. I think now more than ever is a special time because 
because of COVID, you can take the time to get to know someone. You don't have to jump into intimacy with them. You know, you've got more reasons to discover what their routine looks like. And how they treat other people how they treat their family, how, you know, how their relationships are, how their business relationships are, how their relationship is even with their exes and their, with their, with their own family, with their, you know, are they, do they have a relationship with their mom or their kids? There's so many ways, you, you know, like instead of just jumping into something to really look around and see who this person is, because, you know, there's a lot of people that are, as I say, they're con men or con people. And, and, you know, especially this is very big right now with online dating. This is what's going on. And people are jumping into relationships and they don't even realize who they're involved with. Yeah. Glenda, I've got another very controversial question for you, which will come on the back of the share that I'm going to do. So this same person who, who then got married, okay, and before they were getting married, they were telling me it was happening under duress. And I'm thinking, you're a 40 plus year old man, it doesn't happen under duress, right? And then they had the gall another six months later to, to ring me up and say, hey, would you like to hook up? And I was mortified in that moment. I was like, what would possess you to think that, right? Yeah. So I was just gonna ask the question, at that point, did you ever, at any point, did you ever seek revenge? Because like for me, I know who I am and I would never entertain entertain someone like that ever again. Okay, you know, or, so... or take someone up. But I imagine there's a lot of women out there that you know, you could see it as either flattery, you see it as either, you know, they can't help it, they, they're still in love with their ex or that person that was their ex. You know, what advice would you give to those ladies that unfortunately end up in what I call situationships and there's no judgment by the way it's just a hypothetical question well I got a few answers for that <laughs> personally I don't go backwards in life I keep moving forward um, if it didn't work the first time um, the chances are and you're divorced and or the relationship ended you need to sit back and really do a really deep dive and figure out why didn't it work what were the reasons why it didn't work so you really need to understand what your feelings were with the relationship. Um, my revenge is I believe in karma. So I don't worry about what happened to them. Um, I do want to say one very important point about forgiveness. And to me, it's huge. Um, and, you know, my first husband taught me this because um, he held on to that ang anger and that I believe I call it poison. And when you hold on to that poison, that anger, the only person that it hurts is you. So when you release and you forgive, it's not really that you're forgiving them. You forgive the, what the relationship is. What I suggest is you step back and you look at why they've done it. Now, nine times out of 10, they usually have been brought up with those type of signals from their parents. So they are the people they are because of, who they've been brought up doesn't mean that it's right it course, just means yeah. that it's easier to understand and when we can understand things we can forgive them much easier the other thing is is when you forgive you allow yourself for it to go away and allow whatever like i didn't want anything to do with my ex he was not a good person but it was his life and i just didn't want that i just wanted to live a very quieter, happier life. So my kids would have a happier life. That's what it was all about for me. Yeah. So yeah. the idea is let it go, love yourself. And my truest revenge is for your own success. So knowing that you make it through, ladies, gentlemen, when you don't work in that relationship doesn't work, let it go and just work on your own success because that is the greatest revenge when you are happy. 100%, oh my God, I wouldn't have known how to say it any better actually, Glenda, 100%. I think that was the point and the yeah. moral of me sharing my own journey. It wasn't to, to bite back or, or seek revenge. I just got, you know what? Karma just comes back and that yeah. person knows and they know, you know? And it's not about regret because, and I really sympathize with those ladies 
that end up dwelling on something for years gone by, you know, because I was in that space, left an ex-husband, found the next relationship and thought, wow, this is it, right? And of course, we dwell on it. And I dwelled on it for a couple of years thinking, this is it. There's nothing more to my life left now. And it was only then where I had to go even deeper into my work and let go of what I couldn't control and come out the other side of it that karma, as I said, showed up pretty quick for me. So I, I and really love all the sentiment. But build on yourself. Build, you know, when I left my relationship, it was all about doing the work on myself, building my own happiness, learning who I really was, learning what, what it, why it didn't work, what a part of me didn't connect in. Start learning about yourself, learning new skills. Like, you know, you re there's so many right now relationships that are falling and women are, are worried, what are they gonna do? You know, there's certain, so many ways of building yourself back up again. You know, there's so many uh, avenues and opportunities out there, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, don't sit back on any regret, build yourself. And, and that's what, why it's so important to have coaches is because, you know, you want somebody that you can become accountable to, somebody who will guide you, somebody who, when you are down, that will help you up. That's what it's for. You know, the why I started doing this is because when I was going through my journeys, the first time around, I didn't have anybody. My nights were spent after I put the kids to bed, I cried and it was like, I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. I, I had uh, friends were dropping off because they were worried that, about their husbands that because now I'm single. It was stupid. But yeah. nobody yeah. has to go through this alone. And that's why I do what I do is because I believe that it's like a mastermind. When we are together, we can create more than to be doing it on your own. So reach out, get help. That's what we're here for. Ta go speak to somebody who's been there because we can give you some guidance and that fall so low because maybe I can catch you before you fall too far. Oh, thank you, Glenda. I didn't know what happened there. I went to clear the screen because there's people sort of texting me at the same time. I just wanted to reach out for a few people that have just commented. Uh, Manny Verdi just said, some people are fearful of being alone, hence they hang around uh, too long. And I think she gave us a hands up earlier. Uh, just flicking through, if there are any other comments. Um, 100%, and this is what we're trying to say, that you'll go to one of two places. You're either, you know, I call it fear of two things. Fear brings out two things. You'll either be the fear of the regret of the past, which means you end up in depression and sadness as you dwell over, why me? How could right. this be? And all of the sentiments that go around that. And that's a spiral the down. Yeah. And, that, and that is the spiral that goes down, that loses your spiral of confidence. Um, and it just takes you on a different trajectory, which means you're either blaming yourself or blaming other people. And worse still, I know, you know, having been divorced myself, that a lot of shame and guilt sits there. All of right? course. Of course. You know, and, it, and, and it sits there and you can just let it get thick and thick and then it becomes harder. The other place you go to a fear is anxiety. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what, what can I do. Should I leave him? Should I stay? And I deal with both ends of those, okay? Because the only bit you can live is not in the past, not in the future, only here and only here. And I agree with you 100%. But there's also one other thing that people need to understand is the past was meant to teach you some lessons so you become wiser, so you can look at your path in your past I look at, I say it, it's like the car of a rear view mirror. You need to look to see where you've come because you also need to be able to pat yourself on the back to look at your accomplishments, to build your character, to build your confidence, to move forward. But you don't stay in the past because that is the danger zone. Yeah. Now, the last bit I want to leave everyone lit with is, you know, whatever the way you cut that relationship off, and I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong if you've been cheated on, but it's a choice. Now you either can keep relating to that's what happens to you, and guess what, more of that shows up in your future. 
I right. keep meeting men that I can't trust. I can't keep meeting men that I can't trust. And that happens because you won't allow yourself to cut cords with your past, right? Or the other way, you make the person so wrong, so, so wrong, inhumane. And I'm not saying they, they you've got to remember, just like this moment isn't going to last forever, that no. person isn't a cheater forever. I know some people that argue the toss and say, no, 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 no. And I, and I get it, Glenda. I know you just said it was 14 odd years, so I'm not going to go there. But I really get that I would say have compassion for those people as well. Because like you said, you don't know their past, you don't know their childhood, and what's caused them to be who they are. So, okay, I agree go with you it. to I a point. I know you're going to come back, go for it. Yeah, first I'm going to come back. I, I've never been a person like, I, I just say it the way I feel it. Um, anybody is able to change. Anybody. However, to be able to change means that you really have to be aware of who you are and what you're doing. If you can't be aware and want to make that change within yourself, then you're not going to change. So people don't change who don't actually want to do the work. It takes work to change. And, and, and like I say, anybody can change. Anybody can be, you know, who has done something and then they've done something wrong. And like I said, maybe there was a reason in a relationship that the relationship faltered. Maybe there was a reason where the man or the woman didn't feel like they were being loved or being acknowledged or being felt that they were being present. There, you know, there's a reason. And, you know, like, tell me out there, is there anybody who's watching this and who's had it in their life or who maybe has done, have been the person who's done the infidelity, who's done the cheating, and they did it because they just didn't feel it. They were being wanted or loved. I, I understand that. I'm not saying that I don't. And I'm not saying, you know, like I said, had my, had my circumstances been different, I would have reacted differently. My yeah. circumstances, the way they were, they made me react in a way where I needed to protect myself and I wasn't going to lose my head. I needed to look at myself and get my, my act in order before he had found out that I knew. And that is what I teach people is not to think so fast and fall off. It's to organize yourself, to get your head about you, to start thinking because even if you're not sure if something happens and you're before you jump out of a relationship, you really should think about it before you even leave that relationship. Is there something when you're in this relationship that you can change? Yeah. Divorce isn't the all end all in life. It really isn't. If you have somebody and there is some respect and love in that, and there's a chance that you can change it, then that's what it is. Speak to somebody before you end up leaving that relationship. But because if and if you, yeah, if you're going to stay, then choose to stay because you love that person. You're willing to forgive them and willing to continue loving them unconditionally. And otherwise, move on and work for it. Yeah. And otherwise, if you're going to keep coming to the place where, you know, and I call it the classic tea making exercises that I share at the masterclasses. If you're going to keep coming back when you make a cup of tea and then all of a sudden making a cup of tea and the drama starts around it, because let's face it, that's where most, most arguments happen. You know, you didn't put the right amount of milk in. <laughs> yeah. I'm happening this week. Very welcome to come to, but that's what we would have you consider is really have a look at, are you willing to work at a relationship and just get, you cannot change the other person, but you can transform yourself. Inside of you transforming and letting go of the anger, the hatred, the bitterness, you know, the annoyance, everything. And I know at this moment you may be thinking, how I can't do that? Then you've got your answer. And then to Glenda's point is take the necessary wise actions, the wise steps to protect yourself. Don't jump because you have to jump now, you know? I, I always look back to my own own point of view when, when I was divorcing. One of the one of the thank God one of the sensible things I did do was ring fence what was what I needed to. Now it wasn't being clever about it or anything, you know, because that's not why I married the person, but I knew what there was to be done. And I you didn't gotta, require yeah, you didn't require a list or anybody else to tell you. You've got to 
pick out for yourself what's the right and it's not saying you're taking the person to the cleaners or you're being vindictive or manipulative or anything like that you know and in that moment that's all there is to to decide you know whether you and do it with a conscience that's what i will say you know and what i what i try to say that's in when i talk about empowering yourself and having your own power it meaning a, a lot of little things like when you're in a marriage it's it's being mindful that you still should have your own credit card you should still understand what the finances are going on in your own household you know the only way you build your own power is having knowledge so you know both as a couple you should be knowing what's going in and going out of your household you should know your numbers this is what creates your own power within yourself so this is you know when you're leaving a relationship so you don't want to leave a relationship there's also in her husband's name got nothing to survive on you should have always through your, your relationships have that independence of having your own credit card so you know when if something happens you have something to survive on or something to help you that's not being mean or, or anything it's just being smart and it's not even called the backup plan it's actually called the plan the right? yeah. so you live you know and and uh you know most of us don't know those things and Unfortunately, you learn, learn hard lessons. There's one thing I want to ask you, and this will be probably the last question to you, Glenda. Um, do you feel now when you look back that the lessons the first marriage taught you prepared you for that second one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I saw how I was not prepared. I, I was very naive thinking that, oh, yeah, well, it's going to be, you know, we'll be just fine and all the rest. And I didn't realize the struggle of the years and being taken back and forth into court and um, the courts are not always so fair. And there was a lot of things, mental, um, the uh, mental abuse that I went through, um, everything. And that's why when it, this happened, it was like, there was no way I was just going to be telling him that I found out. I needed to prepare myself because I didn't trust if he blew the trust on what I was doing, everything, what means that I could trust him now that he was going to, you know, I, I knew it would have been from bad to worse. So, yeah, you, you need to pre prepare. You need to be smart. Um, you don't need to have to know, like, you know, who in time, you know, I'll be telling, I, I, I know, I, I know you read my story. Um, about, you know, I prepared myself. It would, took me nine months before I got out, um, before we actually found out that I actually knew about, uh, about his, his, uh, his ways. And by that point in time, I had my whole life set up and he was not aware of any of that and it was all how i managed and put it all together and i had no idea it just everything just worked along the way because i kept listening to that inner voice that directed me everything every day when i didn't know what next step to take i went for a walk and i would just ask what is the next thing that i need to do and things came to me and that's how i moved along and every single thing worked out but you know, I walk around now and, and that's what it's about is about I'm sharing my story and being vulnerable because I want to help others that they don't need to be A, by themselves, um, guiding them through so that they will have, even if it's a moment of peace in your heart, there is nothing worse in life when you don't have peace of mind. And, you know, not everything is about money. Peace of mind to me is one of the most important assets of life. Yeah. So um, yeah. before we end this, and I know we're coming to a, a, a close of this, um, I just want to put it out there to people right now that are going through these challenges in your life. My desire right now is to help people to guide them, help heal them and support them through their process, through their struggle right now and have that little bit of peace of mind. We need to, you know, part of life is helping and, and being there for each other. And um, it's a very lonely world when you have to go through some of these 
horrible knocks by yourself. So for me, that's what that's what life is really all about. And I'm I'm coming to you out of my heart, and I'm tr coming to you with being tr totally true. It's it really is about um, guiding you throughout it. And yes, you can make it through. Nothing is is that impossible. Trust me, from one who's been th been there. Oh, thank you, Glenda. We have had so so many of you join on say hello you stay tuned with us and even now as we're just wrapping up we've got about a few more people join on which we totally totally appreciate um thank you so much um it's been insightful it's been invaluable i know this is one of the hardest subjects that women don't like talking about um it's very sensitive it hurts a lot and yeah. you know we do take it very personally you know it, it, it you can't help but do and um you know i think that's probably one of the people's biggest fears in marriages and relationships is please you know if, if the marriage ends that's one thing but to be cheated on is is just brings a whole new definition to it but as i say it's like the d word you know it's no worse sir. it's a word and you, you've just got to look at it it's that person's thing it had nothing yeah. to do with you it's just, just that believe in yourself thing. yeah we got to yeah. stop looking at it it's um that it's all us and there's something that went wrong in the relationship, obviously, but um, it's not, you know, like we got to stop picking up and taking all the faults and feeling yeah. like we're the pin cushion uh, and just believe in yourself and just learn from it. Like, you know, I, I believe from every bad, there is a good and there's so many lessons that help them to us. And it's not a failure in life when when something doesn't work it's it's a lesson it's something that is invaluable to all of us so please um take it as a lesson look back of i don't i would never have had the strength that i have today had i not gone through the challenges that i had gone through through the years yeah so glenda i'm sure the audience are dying to know if we could give them between us our top five signals to look out for if you think you're being cheated on um or you're suspecting it and look when we say this we're going to be responsible here we're going to be responsible because what i don't want you now doing <laughs> is trying to play sherlock holmes or detective and you know causing arguments or problems in your marriages that may not be there and maybe genuine things um that your partner is going through stuff but i don't want you to exaggerate a problem that probably didn't exist so be responsible in whatever we share here as, as places to look so glenn did you want to start first so you give me your one and I'll, I'll 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 go back and forth with you and we'll get to five um we kind of broke up a little bit so i'm i didn't get exactly what you're looking for i'm sorry i said you, the top five signals to look out for if you think someone's cheating on us if between us two, we can name them, call them out. <laughs> well, first of all, if something doesn't feel right in your stomach, that's your top one, number one secret. If something is off, um, that's that's a number one secret right there. Just listen to that voice. That's your first one. Number two, I would say to you, don't jump to conclusions. Keep asking questions. Right. Keep no. all lines of inquiries open. Keep asking questions. And if you don't get answers, ask different questions. All right. But do not do not make the person wrong. Just keep asking in questions. Um, another thing, if you notice that um, there where if you usually have a normal sexual relationship and all of a sudden there's no sex in your relationship, there's a good chance that they're getting it somewhere else. Glad you said that. Yeah, that's yeah. the obvious one. Uh, number four, again, we alluded to it earlier, is the shift in behavioral communication. So it kind of comes with the, with the last one I said, really, but you will see a natural shift when they can't look you in the eye, um, where you can just sense it in their behavior, the way they touch you, not touch you. You know, we alluded to love languages, which is on my grid if you want to find out more about what they are. Um, but all of that, the physiology, the tonality, the way that they, um, the words they're choosing, you know, to take, take heed of those, you know, what's shifting from where, how they used to talk to you when you first met them. The other thing is, it's very funny. Mine used to say to me that I had a boyfriend because I used to go to my girlfriends to, um, when I was living through this, 
and he um I had my girlfriend one day phone and he said oh she's with her boyfriend which was there wasn't anybody there but when they start blaming you for something that that they're doing um when somebody starts blaming you it's usually something that they're actually doing so look for out for that and 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 do you want to give another one <laughs> I'm trying to come on to what was the other one I was thinking of um just in everything where you you can't have access to things so if you don't know what's going on with your finances you don't know where how to do certain things now look this comes with a double-edged sword because I think there is something around trusting your partner you're not asking because you want the, to know all the finances but there is something in that when Glenda was talking about passwords there are certain things that you know as a couple you should know right and it shouldn't be down to just your husband knowing these passwords or knowing how to do the mortgage or everything so just think you know with a cool head where are certain things kept where are passwords ask again come back to ask questions because that will again be in to give away if they're leading a double life of some kind yeah always know about all your financial things in your relationship um in one person should not be like if tomorrow your partner dies and you have no idea of um, where your wills are kept. You have no idea where your mortgage is or who your mortgage is. Or if you have no idea of any of these details, it's not just the fact, you know, about somebody cheating. It's the fact that you should know what's going on in your life because that's all part of your life. And like I said, you know, something can happen to anybody at any time. It's just always being aware. And I also want to let you know that I have an ebook that I have out. So if anybody's interested, um, they can reach out to me. It's called Getting Your Life in Order Before Separation. And I say that before separation is like I said, these are some of the things you need to, you need to think about things about your life should be in order anyways. That's how you have your own power about your life and about yourself. So um, if you are interested, I have a couple of eBooks that uh, you can reach out and to um, be more than happy to share. They're free. There's no charge. Um, I believe in sharing information and I'm here to just empower people. I'm here, like I say, um, it's, it's all about helping others to live a help, happier, healthier life and build your own power within yourself. Oh, amazing, Glenda. I think we've given them so much there. Hopefully there's been plenty of, of um, knowledgeable information. I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing your story, Glenda. Totally, totally appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you've got um, Glenda's handle there, which is I am Glenda Kroll. So you can just find her. You can go follow her, download her ebook. And likewise, if there's anything I can do to be of service to you, there is a masterclass happening this Saturday from 10 till 12. So get yourself registered and I shall speak to you in more detail on Saturday. All that's left for me to say is thank you again, Glenda. for joining Thank you us so today. very much. And thank just everyone, everyone, maybe if um, you could put a comment down and just tell us what little golden nugget you came away with while watching this. So we want to make sure that there was something of use for you that you could come away with and for never mind just about being cheating on it's about being empowering your own self so i send you my love and light and i thank you so very much for for such you're just a lovely lovely woman and i um and like what can i say you know what once COVID comes, I already have a trip coming that, that I have to have somebody to visit in the UK. So um, hopefully. Very welcome. <laughs> we, yes, we can connect. As long as the up. social distancing and everything's taken away, then I am more than yeah. happy to, to definitely uh, invite you over or we shall or make, surely make plans to, to greet you. So thank you again. Thanks thank guys you. for watching and I shall speak to you soon. Thanks Be everyone. Well. Take Be care. Well. Harness Bye. your own personal power. Thank you.